So why did we ditch the Anderson Hitch? This is my personal experience with the Anderson Hitch and I want to share the information that I have with regards to the Anderson Hitch and why we ditched it. Um, if you're not familiar with us, we had a vehicle accident September 11th, 2021 while we were traveling on the Massachusetts Turnpike. We didn't have an accident actually. Somebody ran into us. Broke that propane tank nozzle right off. Piece of his vehicle. He got lucky, I guess. I mean, I feel like things could have been worse, but they are pretty bad. Um, I was in the slow lane. Somebody who was passing us drifted to the median and then whipped back in and slammed right into our 2020 Keystone Alpine, which was connected to my 2018 Ram 3500 using the Anderson Ultimate fifth wheel connection and the Kingpin coupler. Now, it was that accident that led to us ditching the Anderson hitch. And that's why I feel it's important to share it with you because I absolutely loved the Anderson hitch up until that accident. And I realized that this is going to be probably the most controversial video that we've ever done because I used to be one of the people in the forums on Facebook and YouTube that I'd see a video and somebody would make negative comments about the Anderson Hitch and I would jump right in there and tell them how crazy they were and I would attach YouTube videos showing how it could take so much downward pressure and stuff like that in a press before anything failed. I was an avid spokesman for the Anderson Hitch until our accident. So when the accident happened and we were hit on our driver's side about in the middle of our RV, um, it caused us to go into a fishtail. And that fishtail was pretty aggressive. Now the trailer did not roll. Uh, we were able to get the trailer stopped and move over to the side of the road safely. Um, but one of the things that I noticed, you know, after calming down for a little bit was that the kingpin coupler had shifted now if you're not overly familiar with the kingpin coupler that's the red cone that attaches to the kingpin on your fifth wheel and then that red cone coupler rests on the ball that is mounted on top of the anderson hitch now that kingpin coupler when it gets attached to the kingpin, there's two bolts that go in at the side and they're torqued to a specification. And then there's four set screws that come up from the bottom and they're torqued to 40 foot pounds against the plate of your fifth wheel connection to hold the kingpin coupler in place. Now, what I noticed after the accident was that the kingpin coupler had actually rotated full 90 degrees. It may have rotated more than 90 degrees. I just know that when it came to rest, it was rotated a complete 90 degrees towards the passenger side of the vehicle. And that kind of really made me get to thinking about, you know, so the, the pin weight of the trailer, let's say is 2,500 pounds. So while I'm in a fishtail, the coupler rotates and shifts all of that weight four inches off center to the passenger side of the vehicle now maybe that's not a big deal but to me a layman it's a big deal because now the weight is not centered over my axles and it's not centered from left to right of my truck which in my opinion could cause a problem so i had to Luckily, I was able to raise the trailer off of the hitch connection. I got my toolbox out, got my tools, loosened those Allen screws, rotated the kingpin coupler back into its correct position, which if you look at the owner's manual or the um, installation manual is what is identified as position number two. So the cone is actually toward the rear um, not or toward the behind the kingpin, not ahead of the kingpin. 
uh, because that is the way that it allowed me to have better turning radius with the trailer. So I got the kingpin coupler back in the correct position, got the trailer back on the ball, and took it two miles down the road when I was escorted by a state trooper to a rest area. We were lucky enough that there was a rest area two miles down the road. Um, the trailer ended up being not suitable for transport to get to a RV repair shop. Go check out that video and it'll explain everything and we also have some follow-on videos that you might be interested in such as you know how to deal with insurance when you're having an accident things like that um, but we got to the rest area and we realized this trailer is no longer towable all four of our tires that were on the trailer um, due to the fish tailing had separated and I didn't feel safe towing the trailer in the condition it was in so a decision was made that we we're going to have to offload almost everything out of the trailer and take it and put it in storage. Um, so I needed to take the Anderson Ultimate Hitch out of the bed of my truck. So I followed the standard procedures, loosened the bolts, you know, the one at the top, the two on the sides, got those loosened, and then I went to remove the pin that is at the base of the hitch that rests on the gooseneck ball or that holds it on the gooseneck ball and i removed the the little hairpin thing that holds it there and then i went to take the pin out but the pin wouldn't move now i've done this procedure several times in the past and never had an issue with that pin just coming right out but in this instance i had to get a hammer and pound the pin and then i ended up using a uh, a punch to push the pin all the way out so I could remove the pin, therefore being able to remove the hitch from the bed of the truck. Now for me, the problem with that is that tells me something on the frame of the hitch had to have bent because there was no reason that, you know, about a month prior, um, I had been able to remove the hitch with no problems. Yet after the accident, that pin just wouldn't come out without being pounded out. So I ended up filing that as part of our insurance claim and they totaled the, the hitch. Now, another thing that I noticed and you know, I hadn't really paid much attention to prior was the top of the ball that the Kingpin adapter rests on was gouged quite a bit as well. Um, so for me, that meant there was some upward and downwards movement because the the gouges were not side to side. They were up and down. It almost looked like, you know, it, something just wasn't right. So ultimately the hitch was totaled by the insurance company. They refunded me the cost of that hitch. And I opted to go with a B&W companion hitch, um, a hitch that I had kind of looked at before but hadn't really thought of actually purchasing because the Anderson hitch at the time of purchasing our Alpine just made sense, right? I've got this pickup truck with this eight foot bed. And if I want to use that bed for anything, it's so much easier to take this 35 pound um, Anderson hitch out of the bed of the truck. Now I've got the entire bed. I'm not having to lift this big clunky thing. Um, but after a year and a half of having the hitch and only taking the hitch out of the bed of the truck, maybe three or four times, I realized, you know, that selling point really was not a great selling point for me anymore. Um, that if I needed to remove the hitch, removing the BMW companion hitch really wouldn't be that bad. Um, so that's the hitch I ended up going with was the BMW companion hitch so far. Uh, I have driven our new Riverstone um, from Wisconsin to New Hampshire and then from New Hampshire down to Texas and from Texas to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, where I'm at now. And the hitch has performed wonderfully. Now, there are a couple things that you have to keep in mind if you do have a B&W companion hitch and that's maintenance. Um, so occasionally you will have to remove the head of the BMW companion hitch 
There is a Zerks fitting where you can attach your grease gun, pump a little bit of grease in there, and then there are also the two uprights that um, you need to put a little bit of white lithium grease on. I did show that in a prior video, so I'll insert a little clip of that. Forget to grunt. <laughs> These right here are what you're supposed to use the white lithium grease on. Even in the owner's manual, they give you a small packet of white lithium grease when you first put it, put the hitch together to put in the back of your truck to lube this up. So I'm gonna take my can of white lithium grease. We're gonna give it a little grease action. Look at the can says, let's see. Their instructions were really simple. Hey, shake the can. <laughs> spray liberally on surfaces. Don't be shy, spray more if needed. So I just did the spray more right from the beginning. Now, I'm gonna 